What's up everyone? I hope you're having a great day. Today I'm going to actually do a relatively quick video talking about something that I have posted up going back a couple of years. Um, now I had shared a video of my freezer uh, probably, yeah, about two years back and I had loaded it up with about a year supply worth of meat, vegetables, uh, produce, like fish, all sorts of different stuff. Uh, and I had paid for that food a year in advance and it was basically flash frozen and then stored in my frost free freezer. So I'm going to put that video up on the screen as I speak here and you can take a look at it. But what I did want to talk about today is the importance of knowing exactly where you're getting your meat from uh, and also the, the implications of factory farming on a global scale. Uh, and you know, I'm going to briefly touch on the benefit of it um, you know, from a local usability standpoint. So from, from an individual in a community um, the benefits of factory farming. Now there are some small benefits to it. Um, one of those is the fact that you can actually go down the street to a grocery store or to a fast food place and you can basically get a piece of steak or a burger or fish or anything like that instantly, like it's immediate. So that is a great human evolution. Now the, the, the benefit of that is obviously that you're gonna have mass quantities of, of people in any given area or any given city and all of that food that's brought into grocery stores or brought into fast food restaurants, you know, all of that is brought in with trucks. So, you know, it has to be this way in order to feed those vast communities. But now the problem with this is that in order to feed these vast communities, you actually do have to have factory farming. You have to have these large, I wouldn't even call them that large farms, but they're basically like, you imagine a thousand square foot room and then you cram 3,000 cows within this 1,000 square foot room. So you can kind of picture it like you got like one cow right next to the other, right next to the other, right next to the other. Some of them could be diseased, some of them could be sick, dying. Um, and a lot of times the, the producers of, or the, the, you know, the corporations that own these factory farms, they truly do not care about the status or the condition of these animals. They basically just want the most bang for their buck to get the most meat in terms of weight for the littlest amount of money. So what they end up doing is just cramming a lot of this meat, cramming a lot of these am animals, just, just packing them full of really garbage filler food. In a lot of cases, they're actually, the food that these animals are eating is actually ground up other animals. So like it's a completely messed up process or they're eating some sort of uh, genetically modified grain or something like that. Uh, in, a lot of in a lot of cases, they're also given uh, antibiotics and they're also injected with steroids and things like that. So all of this stuff ends up coming through the food itself, obviously. So these animals are eating these things, living in these conditions. They get you know, slaughtered in these slaughterhouses, chopped up, frozen, and shipped over a week or two. You know, in a lot of cases, the, the meat itself will lose tons of nutritional uh, value. Its amino acid profile could even drop just in the transit. Forget the fact of how it was raised and brought up and the conditions, but in the transit from the factory farm to the location in which the, you know, you're, you're consuming or purchasing it from. So, you know, it could take two weeks in a truck where it's basically uh, being frozen during that entire time before it gets to the location where it's then sold. So in a lot of cases, you're buying stuff that, you know, was treated poorly, frozen, lost a lot of nutrients. And by the time you're, you're actually eating it, it, it's really, it's like, it's garbage, you know, it's, it's really garbage food. So that's why a year or two back, I had purchased uh, all that meat and put it in my freezer because it was from a local farmer. So recently, I was actually contacted by a company named True Local, uh, and the CEO, his name is Mark, he reached out to me, and a uh, really nice guy. He basically said that he feels that their products and their, their services, which is basically month-to-month -month meat delivery from local farmers. They, he felt that that was in line with my content and in line with what I try to preach about, uh, which is absolutely true. So if you go to my Instagram, you'll see tons of pictures of steak dinners, chicken dinners, um, you know, fish dinners, all sorts of stuff. And I wanted to just communicate with you that all of these foods are purchased from uh, either local farmers markets or they're delivered to me from uh, companies like True Local, which are essentially providing steroid-free, antibiotic-free, uh, free-range, meaning they're not stuck in, a, these animals aren't stuck in a little box room, they're free-range, they're roaming around. I, I like to eat these type of foods, and I think it's really important to get the proper nutritional value out of them, and I think that's the best way to get your bang for your buck, 
uh, in terms of when you're spending a dollar. It's not just about the, the weight of the protein or anything like it. It's about the general the quality of the protein, how the animal was raised. I even personally like to think of what was that animal experiencing up until the point where they had, had passed, had been slaughtered, deceased, whatever you want to call it. Did they live in fear? Did they have this in their system right up until the moment they passed? Because to be honest, I believe you ingest these things. Uh, you know, you're obviously ingesting the meats and the foods, but I actually think you, uh, to some degree, take on whatever that animal was experiencing at the time of passing. So, if they experienced great fear, these uh, these chemicals would flow through their system, and it would actually, by the time they actually do pass, you know, in, in honest, honestly, in a lot of cases, some people would say that it changes the the taste of the food itself as well. So. It's something to consider, and uh, I did want to share this organization with you, True Local, because I think they're doing great work. And um, you know, take a look at their website. Link in the description below if you're in the Toronto or Ontario area within Canada. Uh, otherwise, what I would recommend you doing is pop open Google and look for a local farmer that's willing to sell steroid-free, uh, free-range, locally raised meat, because that way you're going to get the best bang for your buck, the most nutritional value, uh, and that way you're not supporting the factory farming that seems to just have taken over uh, on a global scale over the past 50 years. So um, give it a shot. Let me know what you think. Either check out True Local, link in the description below, or check out another local farmer by you. Uh, and even if you got to pay a little bit more for that meat, it's definitely worth it in the long run. So, uh, you know, I hope this video helped you. Let me know what type of uh, meat you purchase usually. Do you go to a grocery store or where do you get your, your food from? Just comment down below and let me know or shoot me a message on any of the socials. And uh, thank you for watching this video as always. I will catch you again in that next one.